why do we do personal development and growth? Like, what's the point? What's, what's the purpose behind that? Why would anyone want to change, transform, or anything for that matter? Why isn't right now exactly what is enough? Welcome to More Than Mindset, the only podcast that bridges the gap between spirituality and success. Go beyond the mind with clarity and confidence coach Kim Guillory and learn how to integrate your passion to serve with your skills and experience to create a business you love. Let's get started. Isn't that a great question? I live amongst people who really don't understand what I do. So this question comes up a lot. Like, why not just do what you're supposed to do and have what you have? Like, why do you go embarking on all these other things? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a show on this. For me personally, and for most of my clients, it is about personal freedom. But if we were to take that down even deeper, like what is personal freedom? And why does anyone want that? Like, why do you want to be free? Why do you want to be financially free? personally free? Why do you want to live wherever you want to live? Why, like, why would anyone want freedom? And as I dove into this and I looked up this word because I've been using it so much like this, it's like a self-governing, like autonomy and authority. And here's what I came up with. When a person seeks autonomy, he or she would like to be able to make decisions independently from an authority figure. And I was like, this is exactly what I want to talk about. I saw something on social media a couple of days ago, and it was basically like the bad of woo. So someone put up a post about their own journey and their return to God or Jesus or Christianity. And they were using like personal development as the bad or the negative thing. And, you know, as I, cause I read her post, I don't always, but this one I wanted to read because, you know, guys, I live in Louisiana and there are a lot of things. We've got a, so much goodness about being in a small community. That's not like crazily affected by um, the whole social world and stuff like that. It's pretty simple living, right? You think about farmers and family. Uh, We've got like a lot of priorities and responsibility. We've got that part, right? We've got community and networking, like really good. Everyone knows everyone. But the part about, um, like, I remember when I started with essential oils and yoga and coaching that there was this dangerous thing about that. Like as if it were new age is the word that they used. And that was like anti-Christian. I don't see it that way at all. I have not lost like my soul connection. I have, I've always been deeply connected on a spiritual level, even like as a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult. And that has really just been more enhanced as I grow and develop and take responsibility for my wants, desires, and needs. And I thought it'd be a great topic because not not that I feel like I need to defend it or um, argue or go against this resistance, but because I wanted to do it for my own people who might see this in their communities or on their social media. You know, it's like that meme or that little poster that goes around every once in a while about all these occultic things and bad things. And it just lists out, you know, astrology and um I, I i don't want to bring more of more of it in into this i think you know where i'm going but i remember this with essential oils it's as if i am like anti medicine and i'm like that's not at all it's something that enhances health it's like whenever i put wild orange and peppermint and take a deep inhale like it just lifts my mood it feels really good the energy in my body changes my eyes like pop open and i see more and i feel more and i like that but that does not mean that i don't believe in science and medicine 
And when this person kind of labeled this new age occultic, like that personal transformation and change was that I'm like, this is, this is not true for me. So I want to talk about it. So I got into my own brain and my, my journey. And I'm also considering clients that I work with and autonomy and authority and the self governing, like self responsibility is what we are going for. Like, I don't believe that the government is responsible for my health or my finances. Um, I don't believe that another person, whether this be an employer or your partner, like is responsible for me meeting the demands and desires of my experience here in this material world. Like, I believe that we have a path to attain if we have a desire. <laughs> I truly believe that. If you want something bad enough, you can get it. Think about like those who have achieved something great, like maybe it's in sports or music or um, the ones who've overcome a lot of things. It was so they can have control. And I think that's what autonomy is. It's having control. You're not responsible for it. So I don't get to blame you. I am not um, entitled to it just because I want it. I'm actually willing to put in the work to go get it. I'm willing to investigate and explore and find out all the things that I need to do in order to get those results. That feels good to me as a human. And I don't think it has anything to do with a new age or um, like anything negative or bad. It's, I don't know, I guess I'm kind of disheartened by this whole thing. Like when I wrote the book, The Punchline Approach, it was really about how do I figure out how to want to live and not be apologetic to those around me for wanting more? Because I used to believe that they could make me feel bad or guilty or wrong. Now I know that it's my thoughts about them. It's not them. No one can make me or you feel anything. But I was such a people pleaser. I was so codependent. And all my worth and value was wrapped up in what someone else thought about me. What someone else said or did determined if I was worthy determined if I was good enough, if I was likable. And what the personal growth and development has done for me is I now realize that, listen, I am worthy. I am responsible. And it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. But for me to say that it doesn't matter to me is a lie. <laughs> It does matter. I have not released that yet. I would like to, I'm not sure about you, but I would like to just be unapologetic and not concerned about what other people think or feel or say. But truth is, it's our human nature. It's our human condition. Like we are meant to care for one another. Now you can turn it off. You can ignore it. You can bypass it. But I truly believe at the end of the day, everyone cares to some degree. If you are human, if you have feelings and emotions and a brain and a body and a nervous system, and you like had parents or children or family and friends, and you belong to a community, like I do believe you care, but here's the part that makes the difference. To what degree do you care? For me, it's a little unhealthy. I care to the degree of like, it's my responsibility and that's off, that's imbalanced. And so my work is I care to the degree that I am compassionate and empathetic and helpful. And I do desire to help you achieve and grow and get what you want to help you to create the results to the degree that you want it to, and you're willing to put in the work for it. That has been an issue up until the last couple of years. 
and even up to yesterday, <laughs> I was discussing, we were talking about um, my human design and my business and the organization and all this stuff. And in that conversation, it came up again, this, this need to control. And so it's like being like a visionary and being able to see and like wish for other people to reach their potential and see what I see, which is my bad. Like I'm going to take full responsibility for that. And then want them to get and see that too, to that degree, do I suffer? Does that make sense? So whew, it's the attachment is what I'm trying to say. When we have attachment to people that we love or people that we want to do well, that we want to be in community or we want to be connected to, if we are attached, if we are attached, 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 feels weird when I say that, if we're attached to their outcome and it's our vision and we see this potential, but they don't, they don't have the desire. Maybe they don't even have the skill set for it. Right. And then we have an assumption that they do to that degree. Do we suffer? They don't suffer. I suffer. I suffer because I'm disappointed. I'm suffer because I'm disheartened or um, I like it's, it's all judgment about myself, by the way, if we turn it around, remember it's all a mirror. And so it's, I, I put up a post about this this morning and at the, the end of it was the turnaround. And that's what we want to do with everything. And that is autonomy and freedom and responsibility of, and, and control also because we can control the way we feel by the way that we think, by the things that we are attached to. That controls how we feel. I'm excited. I'm disappointed. If they get these results, then I feel a certain way. That is an attachment to outcome. That is unhealthy. But most of the people that I know <laughs> are unhealthy to the degree that they are attached to someone that they care about. And I think that's just the classic codependent human nature that there's at least a part of that in all of us. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be accepted. We want to belong. We want to feel worthy. We want to know that other people think um, positively of us, or I do. And most of the people that I'm connected to do. And maybe it is more of a girl thing than a guy thing, but I don't think so. I think to the degree that we want it and we want it for someone else is to the degree that we suffer or don't suffer. So I'm making that switch. And uh, the post that I put up was about exercise. When I work out in the morning, I get this like really high energy. Like I get super excited. I get a lot of creative ideas. And I mean, I'm just like ready to to build empires. Like I get, I, I want to just sell my ideas. I could come up with probably five businesses, business models and plans right now that someone else could go and do. And it's really hard for me to not engage or um, react to that energy and instead just receive it for myself. Like I doing the workout, and now I have this massive amount of creativity and energy. I feel like I'm high vibing and my inability or to the degree that I cannot receive it for myself is why I try to give it to other people. And then I get frustrated or annoyed because they don't move forward with the idea or they don't get the results. But the truth is it was mine. And we do this in personal growth and um, development. We get this aha, you know, we, we learn this thing that changes our life and we feel so good and we naturally want to give it to other people, but they aren't like in the practice that you're in. So it like we take it out of context and then we're like, oh, so-and-so needs to know this or could use this. Like I heard them complaining the other day. So I'm going to go give it to them so that they feel better. That's the people pleasing codependent part of us. Like instead, if we just use it for ourselves and we become, we be it, we be the results, then they will naturally see it, sense it, 
and then ask about it. And if they don't ask about it, it's not ours to give. What? Ugh. I feel like it's 10 years I've been trying to work on this and figure this out. And I'm not going to say that I got it because I don't think I got it, but it is getting clearer. And so why do the geeks, the personal development geeks get attached to developing and growing? We love the control and the freedom that we can get from ourselves. that we don't have to depend on someone else in a healthy way. So what I mean by that is if I want to go on a certain trip or I want to buy something or I want to create something in my business and the people that I'm speaking to don't agree and they're like, I don't want to be a part of that. I think that is ridiculous. It's stupid. And then to the degree that I get disappointed with that, that's my issue. But I could want it and desire it and envision it and then take that energy and creativity and desire, and then I could channel it into a project that I push out into the world and it could sprinkle on more people. And out of those people, someone could come and ask for it or want it or recognize it. Does that make sense? So instead, what I naturally do or habitually do is I speak to people that I already know, speak to people that are already complaining about the thing or that I'm talking to. So it's familiar to talk to them, but they're a small group of people. So let's just say there's a hundred people that I speak to on a regular basis. If I channel the creativity and I channel the idea and the momentum and I get really excited about it and it's mine. So say it came through me from exercise and I get into that momentum and I, instead of me going to convince someone who does not want it, right? Instead, I channel it into a clear or a clearly defined path results, right? I want these results. This is how I'm going to get the results. And I take that momentum and that extra energy and I do Facebook ads, or I put it on social media. I put it on TikTok. I put it on Instagram. I put it on Facebook and YouTube, and I push it out into the world. I use the energy and drive to really get it out further. And now it lands in front of 10,000 people. Out of those 10,000 people, there'll probably be one to 10, it's like one to 10% that are going to be interested. And that's all I have to do with it. So it's like, if you have the desire or you feel called to write a book or to um, put out a program or anything like that, your only job is to put it out, paper, pen, computer, whatever it is, you just need to channel careful. I don't want you to think I'm getting all new age because I use the word channel. <laughs> I'm just meaning that you take this massive amount of energy and you bring it down and you become the conduit for that message and you push it out to more people. Then those people can respond and you have a better chance, not because these people are bad or wrong or judgmental, but because you reached more people. So you increased your chances, but I see so many coaches, business owners, practitioners who only speak to the small crowd. And then you're disappointed because nobody wants it. Nobody in that crowd wants it. But what about the big wide world? What about all those people? I bet there's a better chance that they're going to want it. So the purpose of this episode is to really understand why we do what we do, especially those who are passionate and driven, and we get excited about creating something new and seeing change in the world. Well, I'll call this like change workers, whether you are a coach or a massage therapist or a psychotherapist, someone who wants to help people heal. You're going to have to go beyond the 10 people that you talk to on a regular basis. It's just how it is. And be very careful about how you interpret the people who do know and love you, how you interpret their no 
and how you like instantly go into this lack of control instead of take the vision, channel it into a process, push it out into the hands, eyes, and ears of more people, and then watch it come back to you. And that's kind of part of the whole waiting process. When we take the idea and we go here and we try to give it, give it, give it, give it, and they didn't ask for it, they're not looking for it, they don't want it, they're not hungry for it. That's where we bump up against the brick wall. And then our mindset, attitude, negativity comes up with this story. So be very careful, especially if you are a new business owner, are you reaching enough people? Is your message super clear? Can you use the drive and excitement and momentum to drive your message out further to reach more people instead of going into self-preservation and only telling a handful of people that you know and then interpreting that as rejection? I hope that made sense. So autonomy is that control. It is the, how did, let me see how the definition read. I'm going to reread this. He or she would like to be able to make decisions independently from an authority figure. And so the, you become the authority figure. You make the decisions. You're in control and you decide what to do with that information, desire, momentum, passion, vision. You decide. You're the governing body. You are the, so if you're the carrier of the creativity and the excitement and the, the visionary, the potential, like I, I talk to so many people on a regular basis that want to do something in the world. Guys, not because we need to save people, but because it feels good to us to be in control and to deliver something that comes from our own ideas, our own brain, ourselves, our hands. It just feels good to create because we are creative beings. You got to be careful because when you look and talk to people who don't want it, and then you interpret that as rejection, and then you go into the woe is me, you actually haven't taken personal responsibility for the desire to serve, for the creativity, for the energy and that momentum. You haven't taken responsibility for it. So that's why you're not getting the results that you want. And listen, I am preaching to the choir on this one. I have a message. It feels really good when I deliver it, but I haven't told enough people yet. The people that I have told that said yes, or part of my belief, like I see it, I see the results, I see that it works, I see that it's like amazing work that I would like to get to the hands of more people, but am I taking responsibility for getting it to more people beyond the people that I know? So if I know your name, if I know you exist, if I know where you live, like how many other people do I not know? And taking that focus and then channeling it out. It's like standing on the edge of the beach on the shore and you like have this amazing idea and you've got like all of this food and you want to give it to these people, but they're way out there, way out there in a cruise, cruise boat, way out there in the ocean. And you're like, oh, I don't know. Let me see. And you look at the person right here that's sitting on the side of you on the beach. And you're like, do you want a sandwich? Do you want this? Do you? And they're just like, no, I just ate. Like I just went down the road and got something. And you're like, nobody wants it. Instead of how do I get it to the people who are looking for it, who are hungry, who do want it? And how can I take responsibility for that so that I am free of the suffering and the judgment of talking to the wrong people? <laughs> All right, autonomy, look it up. And in the meantime, ask yourself the question, am I in authority of my life? What I wanna create, who I want to be? Am I getting the things that I want to experience? Am I happy? Am I satisfied? Am I doing what I love to do? 
or am I letting other people dictate how I should or shouldn't do? Because a lot of people think that like I work too much. I'm always working. All I talk about is work, but guys, it's not true. Number one, I have plenty of time to do other things, but even more important than that, I love doing what I do. It brings me satisfaction. And if I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it because I have that authority. I have that autonomy. I, I am in control. If I don't like it, I won't do it. So ask yourself that, are you doing stuff you don't like because you see someone else who you think is successful doing it. And then you're trying to do what they're doing instead of getting it from yourself, from your own authority. So do what feels good. And that's going to open up more energy, more momentum, more excitability, and then commit to the thing that you want that comes up in that vision. And then from there, just get really specific and clear on the path of how am I going to get this out there so that I can get the results that I want. It really is about determining the goal, making the, the headway, like the plan for what you're going to do with that. And here's, here's the hardest part. Well, there's two hard parts. Who are you going to become? And so I have to become someone who is courageous and confident and clear in my message. I have to be committed. So I show up as her right now. And then what do I need to let go of? And that's talking to people who are not interested, who have judgment and who have issues about what I do. I've got to cut that away. I've got to quit speaking to people that don't want me speaking to them and are not interested in what I do. So that's what I'm going to offer you. Have an amazing week. Thanks for listening to this episode of More Than Mindset. 